Hello, my name is Matthew Markowitz, and this is the third video in the uh, Level Design Paper Map tutorial series. In this particular video, we're going to cover layers within Photoshop. So this is also a very simple concept for anybody who's used Photoshop before, but it's extremely helpful when understanding how to create content, especially in this case for a paper map. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to hit Control uh, Apostrophe, and uh, we're going to get rid of the... Um, the grid that's kind of on the screen there. Now what I'm going to do is uh, zoom in so we can kind of see what we're doing here. And uh, over here on the side is the Layers tab, and this is where all the fun happens. Now, by default, you have a background layer. It is locked, so you can't do anything with it. However, you can delete the lock by dragging it into the garbage, and now this is an actual layer that can be moved around and done too, uh, done stuff too. So if I take my Move tool, right, you can see here I can kind of move it around, and you can kind of see this checkerboard effect, which basically in Photoshop represents nothingness, like we're looking out into nothing. So anyways... Uh, there's our background, but the way uh, layers work is so if I want to create a new layer, I can click on this new layer button right here, or I can click on Control J, which will also make me a brand new blank layer. And uh, on that layer, I can do whatever I want. So let's just say I go and I grab the paint tool, right, or the paintbrush, and I draw a shape. This is now on a layer. Now, the interesting thing about how this works is we can kind of think about it just like a piece of paper that is layered on top of another piece of paper and so on. If it's cut in any way, you're going to see the content below it. So this is the top layer, and you can see I can kind of move this layer around independent of the other layers. Now, it's kind of hard to tell because this background uh, is actually white, so maybe I'll go on to this layer here we'll pick a, a different color and uh, I'll come in here and just kind of make a shape like this and as you can see this layer is on top of the other one so if I go and grab the move tool up here grab this layer I can move it around whoops grab the wrong layer make sure you have the right layer selected here otherwise you know if I have this one selected even though I'm hovering over this um, well, actually, I've got auto select on. So up here with auto select, as you can see, uh, whatever you're hovering over is what will select the layer to move. So you might think that's always the case, um, but you can actually shut that off and only the layer you have selected is the one that will move no matter where you grab. So keep that in mind, of course, uh, as you're moving layers around. So we can kind of see how that works, right? So this moves over the top of the other layer. Uh, and then, of course, you can switch the layer order, right? So if I go down and stick this one to the second layer, now it is underneath that layer here. All right, so that's just the kind of a basic concept. Now, of course, you can name things. So, you know, I can name things. Uh, if you'd slowly double click there, I can type in like red because that's a red line, or this one is a black line, right? So I can slowly type in there and uh, put in black and so on and so forth. And you can call every layer you want. And I'm not necessarily saying you have to go in and make sure every layer is named, but as you begin to create this big document, if you don't name some of your layers or at least do groups, which I'm about to talk about, you're going to have a hard time finding where objects are, right? Or organizing them in a proper way. So what I like to do is to create groups. So even if I don't name these layers, I'm gonna create uh, a group, which is another term in Photoshop for folders. That's this button down here. I click click on that button and you'll see it's called group so I can call this you know whatever I want so same thing I can double click on that and we can go lines and then I can take these objects and hold control select this other one so they're both selected drag them into that folder and now they're in that folder and I can expand the folder and close it so now I know that all my lines are in this folder now I can even grab the whole folder and move that and everything in that folder will move with it right so whatever relationship it has to the other layers it will move with it if you want to move layers independently of course course, you got to expand out the group, grab that one layer, and then you can move that one independent of the other ones. Now, you might have also noticed this little eyeball over here on the side. These can turn layers on and off. If I shut off a group, it shuts off every layer within it. Or I can go into the sub uh, component here of the uh, group and shut off the individual layers you know, one at a time or leave you know whatever ones I want on. Okay, so those are just some simple ideas, uh, but like I said, try to stay organized by naming things. Obviously, it's best to be able to name all your layers, but uh, to save some time, sometimes I'll just name a folder and put all of the like kind of things within a folder, and that also helps, because otherwise you're going to have, like, you're going to scroll down. I mean, if you're doing this right, everything you do, you put on a separate layer. So we're going to have, what, 400 layers on a ridiculously complex document? I mean, that's insane if you have to scroll down between all of those. So learning to organize uh, is pretty intelligent from the beginning.
Now, you can also transform your layers, which basically means outside of, of uh, moving them, as we can see here, I've already showed you that with the Move tool, we can transform them in other ways, like Scale and Rotate. So if you hit Control-T, which is the hotkey for Transform, you'll see this little bounding box around the object. If you kind of hover outside of the bounding box in any of these directions, you can rotate it. Right? And you can see the rotational values up here, and you can even type in a rotation. So if I type in 90, it will rotate 90 degrees. Now you can also scale it. So if I go here and scale it, I can kind of change the scale. So if I grab any of these little points, I can scale. So this kind of mushes it and skews it and stuff. Well, this is skewing. Um, but you can also grab and change it in any direction. Now if you want to keep its proportions as you're scaling it, hold down Shift. And keep in mind that shift with any uh, transform tool will uh, help you with precise uh, movements or scaling or rotation. So in this case, it keeps its proportions with shift. When you're done, you can hit enter. But I'm going to hit control T again, and I'm going to show you with rotation. If I hold shift while rotating, it will snap in increments of 15. Right? So we can actually set it to an actual amount, um, you know, or a more precise amount holding shift. And then when you're moving while holding shift, and I'm going to apply those changes, but when you're moving while holding shift, it will keep it on a straight line. So it's either going perfectly straight up and down, or if I start sliding it this way, it'll keep it this way. Even if I move my mouse down, it stays on that same kind of uh, path. Right, so shift is kind of a good friend of yours when you're trying to align things, move things, scale things at precise units. Now, if you want to duplicate a layer, those are, that's pretty simple. There's a lot of ways of doing it. Uh, you can also click on a layer, hit Control J, which is the new layer button, and it will duplicate the layer itself. So now I have two of them. You can see I can move that, or of course I can drag the new layer or the layer that I want to duplicate onto the new layer button down here. That will also create a duplicate. And lastly, you can hold down um, Alt with the Move tool selected and duplicate that way, and you can keep doing that on and on and on. Now, let's just say for some reason, whatever this weird shape is that I created, for some reason I want to make this one shape instead of all of these different shapes. Well, you can grab the first layer that that object is on, grab all the way down the bottom one by holding shift. If you want to skip like something, you have to hold control and manually select all the layers you want. But once all those are selected, I can right click and I can merge these layers. And now this is one giant layer, right? So we can see right there that this is just one layer, one object. Um, now, the other great thing about uh, layers is that you can add what is known as layer styles. And this is pretty fun to play with. So I'm going to grab just this one. We're going to hide the other ones. We'll zoom in just a bit. If I double click in the blank space of a layer here, we're going to open up our layer style uh, dialog. And under this, there's all sorts of things you can do, like adding a bevel and emboss, a stroke, inner shadow, yada, yada, yada. Now, if I click on bevel and emboss, you can see immediately it kind of adds that effect. If I click on the actual effect itself, you get the toolbar over here of all the things that you can change. And now I can change the size of the bevel, right? We can even add, come down here and do multiple um, layer styles at once, a drop shadow to the object. Now this drop shadow seems to be a little small. So we're going to increase the distance a little bit of it and increase the size of it. And you kind of see, there you go, you got a shadow. You can turn the shadow on and off and see the difference, right? So we're kind of creating this 3D effect. Now this might not necessarily be useful when you're doing a paper map. Maybe drop shadow can do things to make things look a little nicer or pop out a little bit. I wouldn't use bevel and boss really. Um, but stroke is actually a great uh, tool as it puts kind of an outline around the object. So in this case, it starts off as it being only one pixel, which is actually really tiny cons considering the size of this. So we're going to actually increase the size of the stroke, and you'll see that it'll have a black outline. Now, in this case, it's inside the object because the position is set to inside. However, you can set it to go outside, and now I can make the size of it much bigger and go out. So you can kind of see where maybe this will help with kind of uh, uh, line weights and things like that uh, if you're trying to create something in a, uh, in a paper map. Um, but that is also another kind of helpful tool. Now, let me hit OK on this and talk about um, the, uh, the opacity versus the fill on the side here when it comes to layers. If you drop opacity on any layer, right, what it does is it actually makes it so you can kind of see through it. If I'm at like a 50%, that means I can halfway see through the background and halfway see the object. If I turn this back on, you'll see what I'm talking about. I can see uh, that object underneath it, right, because you can see in the layer stack it is actually underneath it. If I set this back to 100, we won't be able to see it at all, right? So it kind of ghosts it a little bit, right? It makes it kind of look like it's disappearing, except for it does the whole thing, right, if you're using opacity. Now, if you use what is known as fill instead of opacity, it actually 
actually drops the opacity only of the layer and not the layer style. So if I come over here with fill, drop that down, you'll notice that the inside disappears, but the stroke remains exact. So any effect I have, if I have multiple effects, you can see them here. So it'll show you the effects. I can even turn the effects off at any given point or just that one effect. So if I have like three or four of them, like I have a drop shadow and a bevel and yada, 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 I can turn on and shut off um, different, uh, different effects just down here. And then you can collapse all of the effects this way. Now let's just say you like this effect on this and I want it on a different one. So I'm going to move this one over here. I can right click over here, go copy layer style right click on the layer that I want the effect on and then go paste layer style and it will do the same thing. It even copies the fill, right? And sets that at zero and then adds the stroke. So if you have like an effect that you like, you can do that and copy between them, which is kind of cool. Now, um, the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about is selection tools and your selection tools are up here. Right, so when it comes to layers, you can select layers, copy them, only parts of them, stuff like that. Right, right here is your basic marquee tool, which starts off, if you hold your mouse down, as a rectangular marquee. So I can come over here and select just the section. And remember, whatever layer I have selected is what's getting copied. So this part only on the bottom is the only thing getting copied. So if I say, like, hit Control-C to copy and Control-V to paste, I'm going to paste only in what I copied here. Now, it looks odd because you're like, wait a minute, that's not what this thing is here. Well, that's because this has a layer effect on when I paste it in it does not have a layer effect at all all right so let me just take the layer effect off of this whoops and we will turn the fill back to hundred percent so we can actually see the object and there you go and that was the top of the object that I copied okay so that's basically the marquee tool now when you're using grids and snaps like I was showing before right if we turn our grids uh, back on here and I zoom in you can actually use the grid to, it actually snaps if you kind of hover around a corner point, right? Whoops, let me cancel that. If you hover around a corner point, it will snap on the grid. So you can actually make selections based on an existing grid and copy just what's within a grid, paste that in, that will come in as a new layer and you can work with that. You can change this tool to an elliptical tool so it makes circles. Now, just like I was showing before, uh, Shift does, you know, kind of helps you with uh, creating more precise things. In this case, if you use Shift with a rectangular marquee, it makes a perfect square. If you use Shift uh, with an elliptical, it will do a perfect circle. And I'm going to, because it's kind of hard to see here, take the grid off again. Um, and then uh, you also have a single row. Both of these I pretty much never use, but you can make a single row all the way across your document selection, uh, either vertically or horizontally. Um, and then there's also the lasso tool. So if I want to grab just a specific uh, part, and if I have a selection and I don't want that selection to be in the scene anymore, I could hit Control D to deselect and get rid of it. Um, I can go in here and grab, like I just want this part of the line here. So I can use this lasso tool and it'll copy just that part of the line. I make sure I'm using the right, in this case right here. And let me turn the effect off, right? And we'll put the fill back on so we can actually see what I'm grabbing. And that was just grabbing that one part. So maybe I'll go in here and just grab this like so. So now I have just that line. If I hit Control C, Control V, paste it in. There's that other little piece of line that I grabbed using the lasso tool. Now you also have the polygonal lasso tool, which is the same thing, but you click, 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 and you can make a selection like that, any shape that you want, right? So it could be these really weird shapes and go back to the end point, close it in, and then now I can make a copy selection or whatever. Now if you want to add to an existing selection, so I like this, but I want to add more to it, you can come in here and use your rectangular marquee tool, right? Maybe I can hold um, shift here and get a perfect square for whatever reason, right? So I have to hold shift after I click it. If I hold shift before, it won't work. And then I let go, and you'll see that it actually added to the selection. Okay, so now you can begin to add to the selection by holding down shift when you're making new selections and uh, continue to do that. If you want to get rid of a part of a selection, hold down alt, and now whatever selection you make actually gets cut out of the existing selection. So you can see you can create these really kind of crazy selections if, if for whatever reason you need to. Um, so that's basically everything I wanted to talk about as far as layers and some selections and stuff like that. Uh, nothing overly complex, but this stuff will help you uh, when we talk about vectors in the, uh, in the next uh, video. Hopefully you learned a lot in this one, and I'll see you in the next one.